Hello and welcome to week 18 of a 52 week series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about advanced application host config editing or hacking app host as I've titled it. Last week I talked about the configuration system in IS 7 and 7.5 and how the files work together including the distributed configuration system. So today I want to take that one step further and look at editing the most common file which is application host.config. First off, I want to say this really isn't that scary. It's actually fairly easy to do, and anyone can do it. Also, it's fairly common. I'll look at a few different situations here as to why it's useful to be able to just edit the files directly yourself. However, if you make a mistake, it can have a real large impact. And so I also want to cover it's important to understand the background and the impact as well. So let's get started. And so I hope if you haven't already, watch last week's video because I make some assumptions today that you've seen a lot of that and understand the configuration system. But application host config is our primary file that we want to spend time in today. And I'll edit this. And notice I installed Notepad2. Not a tool I normally use because I work with so many different machines, a lot of them generic ones that don't have software like this installed already. But today it's real important I wanted to show this because of the file change notification. which So I've installed and actually enabled that. It wasn't enabled by default. That way if I make any change to this configuration file from another source, it will pop up and let me know. And just to test and to show how these files work together, let's actually do that. So if I go to my Contoso.com, let's switch it from integrated pipeline mode to classic. So I hit OK and open up and notice this. We get a pop-up. The current file has been modified by an external program. Reload. And we'll say yes. So this is really helpful because what you're worried about is anytime you're making a change to here, you want to be notified if another administrator makes a change through IS or actually even yourself. It's really easy to forget and you leave this open. You make a change here. You come back again. You make a change and now you've lost the change that you did through IS Manager because you had an old app host config file open. Now application host config holds a lot of information. Of course we have our config sections, but then we get into it's really we get into our app pools is one of the first important sections here. And we see we have, for example, the default app pool with no customized settings. This is the only entry for it. And we see the classic app pool that changes from the default and to classic mode and contoso, of course, now that I've just tweaked it here. It changes. In fact, let's take this right now and we're going to switch this back again to integrate it. And there's two ways we could have done it. Could have just done this or because the default was already integrated, we could have deleted the section. So let's save this and go back here and notice it's classic right here. I'm going to hit the F5 key, F5, and it switch back to integrated. So you can see that editing this file directly is all that is needed in IIS to make a global configuration change. And a few weeks ago, week 12, I talked about app domain recycles. A change like this will cause an app pool recycle, but it won't affect any of the other app pools. So it won't cause a global app domain recycle. It is safe to do this. Now, let me take a moment and make a couple mistakes here and watch what the impact is. So let's say I forgot my opening bracket here and save it. And if I do that and try to refresh, notice it gives me an error here. And it says the XML is not well formed. And look. Uh, Likewise, if I go to localhost, and notice it gives me an error here as well, configuration. So actually, I've completely broke the server by doing this. So you do have to take a lot of caution with any changes you make. And if you're not familiar with XML, basically everything goes in sets. And unless, see this here ends with that forward slash, that makes it a standalone element. Otherwise, everything else should have a set. See here, this has the opening ad all the way to the closing ad. And so you want to make sure everything you're doing is always going to be in a set. So let's do something here right now with our app pool. And I have an app pool called, well, first let's fix this and confirm that it works. So we'll save, refresh, and notice it does. And again, back here, if I do a refresh, it works. Okay, so what I want to do is go to this app pool here. I called app with credentials, and I use my username with the encrypted credentials here, which are pretty well useless just looking at it this way on purpose. And so what I want to do is create a copy of this app pool. Uh, not, and if, Let's say I've forgotten what the password was. So I can copy this and I can paste it and let's call this app2 with credentials or let's just call this new app with credentials. And I'm going to save this and refresh F5 and notice it's appeared here 
it has my username and this is completely valid everything has been copied so you can see editing this config file how easy it is and it's immediate notice I didn't have to close and open or anything else I just hit the F5 key to refresh now the second thing let's do is let's go search for a site so I'm going to search for a site here notice there's a lot more that I can cover in just these few minutes and it does take a little bit of poking around to get a feel for the config uh, but it's really not too bad and if you want to create let's say you have one golden site that's set up well and you need to create a bunch of other sites I had to do this recently set a whole bunch of sites based on one and so I did it this way and let's use this one here because it's a little bit smaller as an example so this acme.com and let's create a copy so notice I have my original plus my copy and let's just call this example.com now you do have to be careful with the ID because you don't want any overlapping IDs and so there's a couple ways to tackle that if I go to my sites and sort by ID notice that four is available and sometimes there could be gaps it's okay to fill that gap if you need to but just don't have a duplicate so I'm gonna make this a four it doesn't matter if it's in order here but again notice I have the opening site the closing site it has to match and the app pool it can be whichever app pool I want to put it in and so in this type actually let's do new app with credentials and the application path would be wherever I want that path to be in this case let's just do inet pub www root but it could have been anything oh now notice if I save this right now without my ending quote it would break the server would fail right there so be really really careful so I'm going to save this and I'll refresh right away to make sure it didn't break anything and it, it worked fine and so if I go back here to sites and refresh notice I have my example dot com now notice it stopped the reason for that is because I did forget to change one other thing is I forgot to make sure that the bindings are unique and so notice that example.com and acme.com have the exact same credentials here or sorry the exact same binding information and so I need something that's different so in this case you can use and view any previous my previous week there when I talked about host headers and the importance for these to be unique and what values you can put and so again I can just do this and so now if I go back here it doesn't automatically start so now I just need to go start at once and it started without any errors okay so I hope you're seeing by now it's actually fairly straightforward now so there are various things here as you go through these are the global default docs generally you don't want to touch them too much but sometimes you do want to change a, a global setting notice here that you have your application defaults it's possible that you can uh, set some defaults here as well and the same with site uh, you know directory browsing for be careful here but let's say for whatever reason you want to set that to true you could do that and that becomes a global default and but let's go all the way down do control end to our location section and you can see it starts in here with example.orgsweb.com from before but let's say our new one let's create a new location tag and so now I have contosa.com so let's actually set this to our example.com and we're gonna say our global compression and actually normally this is not set this is a leftover from kinda of some prep I was doing a week ago so this you wouldn't normally see this in the config file unless we're doing something exactly what we're doing right now and so I'm setting my URL compression to true and let's say true so I want compression to be enabled and security flag let's say we're gonna require SSL here so if I save that go back to example.com and compression notice they're both enabled and if I go to the SSL settings and notice it requires SSL now because I don't have an SSL binding the site would never work but that's not what I'm trying to show so it doesn't really matter if it works or not so one other common thing that I do fairly often is exactly like this compression but let's say we're gonna do it right now to something different let's do our default docs so now notice and I covered this last week that here if we were to change the default doc it's going to update it's a distributed configuration system it's going to update that in the web doc config of the actual website let's say I don't want to do that I want to ensure we have one and only one default doc it's called default.aspx and notice this is at the bottom so it's going to take a few more disk hits than I want I want to make this more efficient and I don't want to have to set that in the file so what I'll often do is I'll hit another example another site like example.com and I'll make this how I want to 
So let's now take all these other ones and we'll remove them. Okay, so this is exactly what we want. Okay, so now if I go to example.com and web.config, notice that we've removed all of these files. Now there's a couple ways we could have done this. Actually, if we knew how to do it, we could say clear, and then we're going to do an add. And then it's not inherited, and it won't matter if something changes at a higher level. But we could have left it how it was. And in fact, my point was that I use IS Manager to create the syntax, and then I copy and paste that over. So let's now take this, and we're going to go into our application host config. And I want to be careful here that we don't have a stale one, but because I'm using Notepad Plus, I can tell that it's not stale. And we drop this in here. Default docs, and I can clean up the formatting, although this is not essential. Something like this. Not quite perfect. And it's just, just for housekeeping's sake is all I do this for. Okay, so now if I save this, and let's go back to our web.config, and let's remove it from here. We don't need that. And now, notice it notices a change here, so that's fine. We're not using that file anymore. And let's refresh this. And there we have it. So what we've seen is a few ways that you can edit. And of course, this is just starting on all the many things that you can do. Notice I don't have to just put that in example.com. Now that I've learned how to do it, I can change my default docs and drop it into contosa.com here, like this. And let's go to contosa.com, default docs, and notice there we go. It's been done for us. So this gives you a lot of flexibility if you want to make changes to either don't cause an aptamine recycle, you want it at a higher level, you want to make sure that it's set here rather than the web.config. So regardless of what web.config is pushed out, it's going to work uh, unless it overrides it. And this gives us a little bit more of hacking the app host config. Hope you found that useful, and please uh, offer feedback. Love to hear from you, and I hope to see you again next week. Thank you.